this child, and may the balance protect you. Cortez? Cortez! I have a bad feeling about this. Wait, what was the name Cortez told me to remember? Westhouse? Ryan Westhouse? I think that was it. Cortez said to look him up when I wanted to go home. Well, I want to go home now. He looks like some kind of priest. Hello? Hi. Et tu? Emilie, tu va? Understand. Aku sta kayan paras. Inomalante kandra. Ton maris. Ore tiesi ton. Where is Cortez? To tone e ken. To ken vernilia fata tim tu vermilian ton. Aku tu fata, se quandare, ken e stale, ton. Ton, ken i tu e ira e mbab simil kwakite. Aku kandi, good. Niranton al voce, sank al koda magic. Torante, salhe, naven, all tongue. Al orta i beginning, parasim tin iu. You have tiesa i magic i sara, i the knowledge, aritua i a i tue by generations e umani, knowledge of all tongue. Now you have allowed the magic to enter your heart, and the knowledge of all tongue, ever present but dormant, to guide your ears and your tongue. I... I understand you. You speak English? Why didn't you just tell me straight away? <laughs> no, child. I do not speak English. I speak Naven, all tongue, the common language of Arcadia. Arcadia? Wait a second. How did I get here? What is this place and who the hell are you? Oh, my manners have abandoned me yet again. I'm afraid my preoccupation with ancient texts and the company of my fellow fathers have left me unequipped with the grace of social intercourse. Meaning what? That I have been rude. My name, dear child, is Tobias Grensret, and I am the Vestrum of the Sentinel. The Order of the Balance. We are the Fathers. Ah... Uh, okay. I'm April. April Ryan. I take it this is your first shift, your first passage through the Divide? I have no idea what you're talking about, but I guess this is my first shift. I just... Then I will explain everything. Someone must. You are without guidance. Without a mentor? Mentor? 
There's this guy, Cortez. He assisted me. Told me about magic and truth and dreams and portals. Crazy stuff. Well, it seemed crazy at the time, although now I don't... Cortez? Ah, yes, Cortez. Very good, very good. Then come, let us proceed. Let me show you Mercuria, the grandest city of all ages. Explore Marcuria, April. See the sights, meet the people, and then, when you are ready, return to the temple. I will answer whatever questions you may have then. The whole fountain's been carved in one piece from a granite-like material. Very impressive. It's Vestrum Tobias Grensren. Excuse me, Vestrum Tobias? Tobias, just call me Tobias, please. I require no ceremony from a distinguished guest such as yourself. Did you enjoy the sights? I don't know. I'm... overwhelmed. Walking around out there, seeing with my own two eyes things that can't possibly exist. I kept thinking, it's all a dream. I'll wake up at any moment now and everything will return to normal. But then I realized, I'm still here. It's real. I can touch it. I can smell it. And you know what? It doesn't make sense. Nothing makes sense here. Magic, alien creatures, parallel worlds. I don't believe in those things. I don't believe in fairy tales. In your world, in Stark, there is no room for magic. That is, and always has been, the curse of science. The fallibility of logic and order. They leave no room for the imagination. If it does not fit into the narrow perception of the laws of nature that your world adheres to, it's a fairy tale. But then, magic has its downsides too. It's unpredictable. It invites chaos. It puts the balance in peril in a way that science alone never could. I keep hearing about the balance and about Stark and Arcadia and... 
This is probably gonna sound strange to you, but I'm clueless. I have no idea what this place is, or what I'm doing here, or... All I know is that something strange is happening in... in my world, I guess. I had dreams, and the dreams felt so real, and then things started happening in real life, too. Things that shouldn't... couldn't happen, and I... I think I will begin at the very beginning. I believe that is why you were sent here. To learn, to understand, to see for yourself. Like you said, you cannot believe in this place. Well, you will. After you have learned the truth, you will. Come with me. And I will tell you the story of Earth as your books never have. And when your eyes and ears are open to the truth, perhaps your mind will follow. We can only hope. Come. This is the true story of the Balance. As observed by the Sentinel, the Order of the Balance, the Fathers. The Sentinel Minstrum committed this story to the pages of the scriptures and to these temple walls thousands of years ago, so that coming generations could learn and understand their past and their future. The wall paintings we are looking at became known as the murals of the balance, and it is through these images that I will recount our common history to you, April Ryan. The story begins and ends here, with this mural. Ages ago, and in ages to come, the Earth was one, and magic and science existed side by side in nature and in all people. There was balance, and there was harmony. You're saying there was just one world then? One world, one Earth. Magic and science in balance with each other within each and every living creature. The power to make the stars dance and to create life itself was within our grasp. But then, humankind began to exploit this divine power of two, and they saw fit to use it for their own selfish purposes. The balance of the cosmos was in peril. Unless something was done, Unless man was humbled and learned to fear the power he wrought over cosmos, the twilight of chaos would fall upon Earth. It had happened before, in distant times and on distant worlds, and it would happen again. And every man, woman, and child of every people and every race would be devoured by the coming apocalypse. We were given a visitation then. The drag kin having lived among us for untold generations, rose to offer their guidance and assistance in preserving the balance on our world. The Drag? I think I've heard that name before. Drykin. Draken. Dragons. Whichever name they go by, they remain the eternal servants and custodians of the balance. There were four of them here on Earth, and of the four, one who would found the order of the balance, the Sentinel. The first Minstrum were instructed that magic and science would have to be separated before the balance collapsed and brought untold disaster. Earth would have to be split in two equal parts. Arcadia and Stark, magic and science, chaos and order. The first sentinel were counted thirteen, six scientists, six magicians, and one who was between, the drag kin, our mentor, our custodian, our learned guide. Both magic and science were needed to perform this most difficult of tasks, to split a world in two, to create two worlds from one. Wasn't the use of that kind of power dangerous to the balance? Yes. And so for this purpose, they built a tower to channel their powers and focus them on the divide that they would create. The kin had brought a disk with them, a disk forged in the fire of their world. 
placed at the base of the tower and the epicenter of the divide, the disk and the tower would become one, a conduit for the flow of magic and science. At the appointed hour, the Thirteen came to the tower and with them a woman whose destiny was decided by the purpose to which she had been born. She would be the first guardian, the human protector of the balance, who would stay in the tower for a thousand years to watch over the two worlds and to ensure that the flows of magic and science were always equal. And so the ritual began. One world was to become two, separated by the balance, and each world visible to the other only by way of dreams. Who was ushered into which world was not an arbitrary choice, nor one taken lightly. For the magical creatures, the choice was simple. They had to go to Arcadia. Their kind would not survive in Stark. But for others, families were torn apart, lovers separated and friends lost for all eternity. Encircled by the Twelve and the One, and the One who would be Guardian, the disk at the base of the tower began to spin faster and faster as more and more power flowed through it until it was a blur. Darkness enveloped the tower, but the disk glowed brighter and brighter. Reality turned, and in one moment, a new reality had been created and two new worlds born. In the tower there was silence. The original disk had disappeared, and in its place was a smaller counterpart, a similar yet different disk. Around and outside the tower the world looked different. They were now between Stark and Arcadia, between reality and dream. This was the realm of the Balance and of the Guardian, and it would be her home for the next 1,000 years. The one who was kin picked up the disc and said, This disc is a counterpart to the original disc, which has now become this realm, and the key to which has been split and divided in four. The key is the disc, and the disc is this realm. This mystified the Twelve, and the one who was kin continued, Know only this. The Guardian's realm cannot be broken unless the disk is broken. But nor can it be repaired without the disk being repaired. The four pieces that is the key will be given to the six of you who are to be taken to Arcadia for safekeeping. Yet the key will never be complete, he went on, without the precious stones that adorn each piece. I will keep one, and my fellow kin, the three others. Should the day come when this realm must be repaired, or the world reunited, and that day will come, you will assemble the disk and the kin will come together one last time. With that, six of the thirteen went to Arcadia, and six to Stark, and the one who would be guardian ascended to the throne, witness the mural, where her dreams and hopes, her very soul, were locked away in the disk. In service of the balance, these traits were nothing but barriers. Through new eyes, the imbalance between the worlds was as clear as the stars themselves to the Guardian. And with one thought, she channeled chaos from Arcadia and logic from Stark into the disk and redistributed the power wherever it was needed. A new era had begun, the era of the Guardian. After they left the tower, two of the Drakkin went to Stark, the other two to Arcadia. The six who came to each world started what is now known as the Sentinel, the Order of the Balance. But while in Arcadia the Sentinel thrived, in Stark they did not. In Stark the memories of magic and the balance could not survive in the face of the new reality of natural laws of logic and of science. And soon, very soon, Arcadia became nothing more than legend, a myth, 
tales of fairies to recount to impressionable children and stories to frighten and entertain around a fire. And while dreams still brought sights and sounds of Arcadia to those asleep in Stark, they were discounted as mere dreams and nothing more. So that's it? We forgot about our past and about Arcadia? And that's the way things are? Then what's wrong with that? And why does magic from Arcadia seem to have begun leaking through to Stark? That is another long story. But I can tell that you are tired of stories, and so I shall be brief. As I told you, while in Arcadia, the Sentinel grew in numbers and in strength. In Stark, while flourishing for a brief time, they were soon diminished and powerless. Some of the Stark Sentinel did not take kindly to this, and they berated the Arcadian Sentinel for their politics and teachings. The Stark Sentinel wanted people to work towards reunification, while their brothers did not. So the inevitable soon came to pass, and the Stark Sentinel parted ways with their Arcadian brothers, and named themselves the Vanguard. And while at first their philosophy was not so different from ours, over the years it changed radically. The Vanguard wanted the Divide torn down, the worlds reunited, and the return to what they called the Glorious Ages, when humankind could control the forces of Cosmos. But first they needed their own servant in charge of the balance, their own guardian. Now, every 1,000 years, a new guardian took the place of the old one, because no one can be separated from their souls for any longer than a 1,000 years. Every 1,000 years, a new guardian was born. The balance provided the seed from which a new fruit grew. But now, it has been 200 years since the previous guardian, the 12th guardian, was to be replaced. Every new child born to the balance has been taken away by the vanguard to be studied in an attempt to control them. In every instance so far, they have failed. But the Twelfth Guardian could wait no longer. Only a short time ago, the disk in the tower shattered, and the Guardian left his throne. The balance is now untended, and we have yet to find a new Guardian. Unless we do so, the Vanguard may get their chance. And they may be able to place their own puppet on the throne, to rule the balance according to their principles. And this we cannot allow. It will mean the end of Stark and Arcadia, and the dawn of an era of chaos. Now do you see? I understand the history. I can even accept it. But I don't understand why I'm here and what Cortez wants with me. The balance is in peril, April. The Guardian has abandoned his tower. He has disappeared, and there is no one to take his place. He must be reinstated to protect the balance until a new Guardian may be found. And what can I do? I'm nobody. I've just been having a lot of bad dreams. You are a strong shifter. I have not seen your like in my lifetime. A shifter? Someone capable of opening doors between worlds. A shift. A portal between the realms of Stark and Arcadia. Are you kidding? I didn't do anything. Cortez was the one who opened the... shift, and he just waved his hands around in the air. I don't think I'd be capable of opening a portal even if I had a magic wand. Only a shifter's own power can allow her to travel. No one else can do this for her. Cortez only channeled your power to aid you. He would not be able to step through the shift himself. Even if that's true, I don't have any control over my... talent. Not yet. But in time you will. How else do you intend to travel back to your world? God, I hadn't even thought about that yet. Can't you help me? I'm afraid not. Even if I could shift, I would not be able to channel through you like Cortez did. So, I'm on my own? If you have any questions, I will do my best to answer them. But aside from that, yes, yes you are. 
That's so not cool. No, it has been unseasonably warm. If you don't mind, I will return to my studies now. Thank you for listening to an old man and his long stories. N no, thank you. It's starting to make a little bit of sense now. That is good news. Come see me again if you have any more questions. I feel like someone's staring at me. Excuse me. What do you know about Cortez? Your mentor? What has he told you about himself? Not much. Nothing, in fact. He's a complete mystery to me. To learn something about someone, the best way to go about it is to ask them yourself. There is nothing I can do to enlighten you. But who is he? He is who he is, what he is. If he has not told you himself, then perhaps he does not wish you to know. It would be improper for me to divulge his secrets. You're as bad as he is. No offense. It's just frustrating. I understand. The next time you see him, tell him what you have told me. Maybe he will tell you the truth, maybe he will not. It is his choice to make. How am I supposed to get back to Stark? The only way to get back is through a shift. You are a shifter, April, and the power to travel between worlds is within you. It might be within me, but it doesn't look like it's coming out anytime soon. I wish I could help you, but I cannot. You must find the path on your own. Do you mind if I ask you some questions about Arcadia? I will try my best to answer any question you may have, April. What's the history of Arcadia? There is so much I do not know where to begin. In truth, it would be wiser to ask someone else, unless you wish to know about the Fathers, the Balance, or Mudhoppers. Mudhoppers? My secret passion. I study them. They are a most fascinating species. Most fascinating indeed. But I am not practically versed in the intricacies of history, I'm sorry to say. What's Mercuria like? I have lived in this city all my life, and still it amazes me what a diverse, exciting, and wonderful place it is. Many have called Mercuria the Jewel of the Northlands, and they are right. But it is a diamond in the rough. A city this size can never be flawless. There are always shadows and people who hide in them. Lately the shadows have grown and darkened, and I fear for the future. But Mercuria is still a wonderful place to live. What else can you tell me about Mercuria? Mercuria is the capital of Irede, the unified country. And we are located on the southern coast of the Northlands, halfway between Tyran and Khorasan. Between the Snapjaw and the Gaint Beast, some might call it. Between the Embers and the Fire. Yet democracy and peace have reigned for thousands of years now. And although relations may at times be strained with our Tyran neighbors, the High Council are masters of diplomacy. And Lord Igvan Delen is a firm and just chief counselor of the Iredan flag. Tell me a little about Irede. Irede means both unification and assembly in Haitung, and many still call Irede the unified country, even though it is an age and a half since the lands of the north joined together in alliance. I read stretches from the plains of Nedra in the north to the Great Sea in the south, and from the territories of Tyran in the west to the thick woodlands in the east. It is populated by humans and Dolmare, 
Tyron, and a number of other races. It is even said that a tribe of Venar have a ring of trees in Riverwood, though I'm not sure that is anything but a myth. What are the Northlands? The Northlands is a collective term for all the lands north of the Great Sea, and south of the border mountains including Irede, Tyron, and Khorasan. Before, however, the word Northlands was used to describe this entire continent, including the territories north of the mountains and the icy wastes beyond that. Some still prefer the latter interpretation of the name, and to the people of the Southlands, anyone hailing from north of the Great Sea is a Northlander regardless. Thanks for the information. I'm glad I could assist you. Do you know a man named Brian Westhouse? Westhouse? That old goat? Yes, unfortunately. What would you with him? I need to find him. I do not know where he lives. I hear somewhere on the outskirts of the city by the sea, but I cannot tell you any more than that. Who'd know about Westhouse? His whereabouts? I do not understand what you would with him. He is rude, uncultured, and ignorant. Cortez told me to look him up. Well, I do not know where he lives or frequents, but someone at the market may. He trades merchandise there, and I think he collects maps of the Northlands. <laughs> I'll see you later. You will? If you say so, then it must be true. <laughs> 